So Kevin Harvick got back-to-back -back wins at the long winning streak. That's cool. But before I begin, I want to thank everybody for 100 subscribers. I never thought I would ever get that many. So I appreciate y'all for that. And let's begin with uh, Kevin Harvick. Like I said, that long winless streak was 65 races, which he broke at Michigan. And then Harvick got those back-to-back -back wins after winning on Sunday. The driver of the Ford Stewart Haas Racing Ford was ahead of Christopher Bell, who finished second, and Chris Buescher, who finished third. They were chasing him in the final laps, but Harvick was able to get through traffic and win the Federated Auto Parts 400 at Richmond Raceway by .441 seconds. The NASCAR Cup Series win was Harvick's fourth at the .75 mile short track. It was his first since 2013 when he drove for Richard Childers Racing at the time. The win was also his 60th, which tied Kyle Busch for the most by active drivers and the ninth most all time. Harvick led twice for 55 laps as he passed eventual sixth place finisher Joey Legato for the lead on lap 334 and getting it back from Danny Hamlin on lap 353 at the end of a cycle of green flag pit stops. Here's Harvick talking about if he thought he could get back-to-back -back wins before the regular season ended and more, courtesy of USA Network. Ah, you know, I just, I didn't know. It's like I, like I said uh, last week, I mean, the cars have been running good week in and week out, and you see that we have a lot better understanding of, of what's going on with how we didn't adjust it on the car after the first run, and, and we're able to, um, you know, get our car handling a lot better. And I think as it got dark, um, the racetrack really came to our Mobile One Ford Mustang. So just got to thank uh, Mobile, Bush Light, uh, Gear Wrench, Hunt Brothers, Ream Ford, Xfinity, Morton Buildings, Easy Go, everybody who helps at Stuart Haas Racing on this uh, four car. Harvick was also asked uh, if he was worried when Christopher Bell was coming and more, also courtesy of USA. Well, I knew he was coming, but I forgot to shift down the front straightaway the last time I was... Yeah. I was not paying attention, and he got closer than he should have. So um, I made a mistake there a couple laps doing the doing the same thing. Uh, I wasn't shifted on the back, and I was shifting in the front. So there was a lot going on, and uh, made a couple mistakes, let him get too close. Harvick was also asked on how dangerous his team can be going into the playoffs with momentum and more. Also on USA, uh, we're just going to keep doing the things that we're doing, right? You know, I think we just have to, you know, just keep an open mind about things yeah. and keep progressing and keep understanding the car. Understand what we could have done better today. Understand what we could have done better in qualifying yesterday. And do the same thing over and over. I want to say hi to Piper and Keelan, uh, Delaney, and everybody home. By pitting one lap before Logano on lap 340, Busher got ahead of Logano and began to chase Harvick, who led the final 48 laps. Busher got to Harvick's bumper at one point, but couldn't pass him. The driver of the number 17, Roush Fenway Keselowski Ford, lost his chance for a win when Harvick lapped Bubba Wallace and Busher was... Stuck behind Wallace. He wound up falling behind by two seconds. Here's Busher's thoughts on how close he was to winning and more, also courtesy of USA Network. Really close. Um, everyone on our Fast and All Mustang did such a tremendous job overnight because we didn't know we were in this position yesterday and uh, didn't qualify real well and everyone worked hard and had a fantastic race car today. So I um, think uh, it's a little easy with this format to feel like third place doesn't matter, uh, but uh, it, it's it's nice to be close and to keep progressing and getting getting better uh, as we've gotten through the summer. So really neat to finish here. Really proud of everybody. Uh, just burn the rear tires up. Uh, ultimately, that's on me. Uh, lap traffic didn't do us any favors either, but ultimately just uh, got to keep the rears under a little bit better so that we can have a little better shot there to get after him for the win. Bosha was also asked on what he's being see, uh, seeing out of his team's performance, what he's been seeing, and more also on USA. Uh, you know, it's, it's not really fair to uh, just look at the results because uh, at the beginning of the year, we didn't fire off as, as good as we thought. We didn't, we didn't have the, uh, the improvement, and um, it took us a, a few months, but we've had three or maybe four months now of really solid runs. Um, really good speed, ever since Dover, really, that uh, we, we've been really close. We've had, uh, had some bad luck, um, had some mistakes that, that I got to clean up. Um, you know, we, we've made progress through all of it. The results don't always show it. Uh, we were running really well at the 600, and we ended up upside down. Uh, <laughs> there's no doubt in my mind we could have competed for a win at any road course, and we were on fire. Uh, we're making highlight reels for all the wrong reasons. So uh, we're, we're, we've been fast in those processes, though. We just have to put it all together to, to show those results like we did here today. On 12 last fresher tires, Bell charged forward and was able to get by Busher on lap 396 of 400 
and was closing in on Harvick, but he ran out of time. Here's what Bell had to say on what he needed to beat Harvick and more, also on USA. Yeah, I don't know. I got held up a little bit there on the front side. Um, and I guess when you're splitting hairs like that, that probably cost me the race. But, man, that's two races in a row here at Richmond at the uh, beginning of the year. We kind of had that same strategy and barely missed fifth coming to the line, and today it was a win. But uh, really, really proud of Adam Stevens, Adam Stevens, this entire 20 group. The uh, Ream Camry didn't feel very good at the beginning, and we had our fair share of troubles. And uh, Pit Crew really came through at the end there with some blazing stops and allowed us to uh, get in front of the 11, who was on the same strategy as us, and uh, get up there and contend. Bell was also asked on what he was looking for when he saw the right front tire and more, also on USA. Yeah, I fenced it early on whenever I was running really high, uh, so I was just looking at that. But definitely an eventful day. Um, Richmond has been a place that's been so good to me. Uh, very thankful for the opportunity to be at Joe Gibbs Racing, racing for the win like that. So hopefully we can carry this momentum forward. And a battle for the final position in the playoffs, Ryan Blaney expanded his lead over Moore Truex Jr., despite finishing 10th to Truex's 7th. The difference was stage points. Blaney had 11, while Truex had 0. Blaney now leads the 2017 Series champion by 26, with two le races left in the regular season. Hanlon came 04, followed by Chase Elliott. Logano led a race-high 222 laps, but his 22 forward wasn't strong later in the race as it was earlier. Here's Logano talking about what happened in the last run after leading 222 laps and more, also courtesy of USA. Yeah, I think just as the sun went down, um, Jack cooled off, obviously, and, and, and lost some uh, some turn in our car. And Kevin and, well, some others got a lot better uh, the, the last couple of runs of the race. And when it was hot and slick, that was probably our, our strength with the Shell Penzo Mustang. And uh, we had good turn. And then once uh, it cooled off, we lost the turn, but we still weren't real good on the exits. And... Um, and then you start playing defense and running too hard, and it's just kind of a, a downhill slope from there. So I was hoping for a late race caution for, for something. That was our only prayer at the end there. But, um, you know, overall, hey, we got a stage win, playoff point. That's something to be proud of. Um, just thanks when you say we led 222 laps and not the right one. Logano was also asked on how much encouragement he has going into the playoffs with the speed and more also on USA. Yeah, it means we're executing, um, you know, really well uh, throughout the race. So we're able to, to get something out of a, a race where we don't have a fast enough car. And when you have days like today, we have a fast enough car, you want to capitalize. And we, we did as far as a playoff point and a stage win, but not enough uh, at the end of the race. So um, need, need these ones to be race wins instead of just stage wins. But um, you know, overall, I feel like, uh, you know, we're starting to come into our own here as the playoffs come around the corner. We're getting a, a little bit more solid, um, you know, situated more in the top five. Uh, more than what we've been. So I'm proud of that, and we just got to keep that going. Other notable finishers include Eric Amarola finishing eighth, and he will not retire after this year, as he will return in 2023, according to reports. Kyle Busch finished in ninth, Bubba Wallace 13th, Kyle Larson 15th, Ross Chastain 18th, Daniel Suarez 19th, Ty Reddick 31st, and Ty Gibbs subbing in for Kurt Busch in 36th, respectively. The Cup Series will be going to Watkins Glen on Sunday for a race on the road course. What a run Kevin Harvick has been on. I did not expect this. Obviously, uh, I didn't watch the last couple races because I was on vacation and I wasn't able to watch it there. But I figured when I came back, I figured Kevin Harvick probably won a race. That's what I figured. That's what I thought, especially because of the fact he hadn't won in so long. And when I saw that he won at Michigan, I was like, Kevin Harvick won. And, and he actually ended the streak of 65 races, which dates back to 2020 at Bristol when he won there. And the fact is he ended up doing it. I thought that he was going to win a race. I figured somebody was, was going to win a race, like somebody different. And it was Harvick. And I thought I knew it. Uh, he, he won. So that was, uh, that was cool. And the fact that he ended up winning back-to-back -back after not winning for 65 races, I saw somewhere online saying that, oh, it was the first time a driver done that since like Carl Edwards did that. I think it was 2010. So that was a crazy stat there as well. So happy for Harvick as well. That is his nickname, pun intended, or no pun intended. <laughs> happy Harvick is able to win again. And I'm happy for Harvick. And, and it was cool when he was taking the lead at Richmond. The fans were cheering for him too. That's pretty cool as well. It kind of felt like Chase Elliott for a second there too, him winning, uh, him leading like that. So I, I was happy for him to do this. Obviously, I, I, I was kind of worried when he was not winning for a while that he would end up on, the, on a Jimmy Johnson kind of streak, uh, losing streak that he wouldn't win for the last couple years of his career. But fortunately, that, that was not the case. He was able to win a couple more races. 
And look, and now he's got confidence again. And you know when he's got confidence, he's dangerous. He can pull off a lot of wins, and he's already got back to back. Obviously, Watkins Glen, he's won there before, but he hadn't won there since two thousand six. So I don't know if he's going to win that, but at least now he's like more secured in the playoffs because a lot of drivers have been winning in one race, fifteen winners now. So him getting the second one was big. So now like he's locked in like for sure now because he's got two wins and he's good to go now. So. Definitely, like, now, like, you, you definitely did not want, the competition did not want to see him in the playoffs, especially how bad he was struggling and everything like that. Obviously, he was still, like, running up, like, you know, top five, top ten, but he wasn't, like, winning and stuff like that. But, yeah, he definitely was, but for the most part, he was definitely, like, struggling as well, even though he's had his good runs. He obviously, like, had a second earlier in the year, too. Close call there as well. He could have won more, but, you know, he, it's a good thing he's winning now, so I'm happy for him there, especially since he had been struggling for so long and everything like that. Especially now he's finally figured out the next-gen car. Obviously, he and, and Roddy Childs have been winning so much. And the fact is he's got now 60 tie in Kyle Busch. But Busch, like, he's still like 10 years younger or so than, than Harvick. So he's going to end up winning a lot more races than what Harvick will win, most likely. But, you know, Harvick right now is tied. And he's joined a pretty big list like with like Busch as well. Like Kale Yarbo, Richard Petty, Bobby Allison, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Daryl Walcher, Dale Lerdhart. Like, that list is huge, you know? And let's not forget David Pearson, who was second all-time at wins as well. Obviously, you know, like Richard Petty has the most with 200. So that's a pretty incredible list there. All Hall of Famers. Johnson will be very soon. And and, and Harvick will be one day as well as well as Kyle Busch. So they'll all be Hall of Famers one day together. So that that's a pretty cool list for him to join. And he's, he's still got more weight races to, like, possibly win as well. So who knows how many more he'll get. Before his all said and done, definitely like like I said, I didn't think he would win anymore anytime soon. So I'm happy that he got these wins. So that's good for him there, especially because you know that he's earned it. He's been on a long losing streak, and he knows what it's like to be on these type of losing streaks. He's been on a way longer one though, like over one out of ten races with Richard Childers racing. But obviously that team was not as capable as Stuart Haas racing. But circumstances like were him not winning, obviously could have, would have, should have last year at Bristol. But Chase Elliott held him up after he blamed Harvick for wrecking him. Even though that was kind of childish out of Elliott, in my opinion. But Harvick could have won that race. Probably could have, would have, should have. But instead, like, he was still on a longer losing streak as a result. But it, at least he finally did win now. And like I said, he's got some confidence going to the playoffs. But definitely close call, like, for Bush, though. Uh, that, that was close, especially. It looked like he could have gotten him in traffic. But the lap traffic was just too much. Harvick was struggling in traffic at first. But... He was able to navigate through and was able to like pull away with clearer track. But Bush, unfortunately, couldn't do it. Obviously, he ran out of tires, like he said in his interview. But Bell, like, he had the fresher tires and he was coming. And Harvick was lucky that there was no more laps left in the race because if there was, Bell would have won, definitely. But Harvick, like, fortunately, was able to get the win there. And, but Bell, like, he's got his win as well. So definitely a uh, good run for Bell as well, for, Rich, uh, for Joe Gibbs Racing as well. And uh, definitely see like what he could keep doing later. Especially on the road course of Watkins Glen. That's going to be interesting there. I would think, you know, like, obviously a driver like Chase Elliott is going to be favorite. Truex could, that could be his best shot to win before the playoffs because he's got to win soon. I can't believe that he's out right now. I can't believe that. And Blaney, too. Like, the fact that he's 60 and if a new driver wins that's below him, he'll be out despite being second in points. Like, to L, as far as regular points is concerned, not wins. That's crazy to think that. Tells you, like, if that happens, it does tell you that this playoff system is tough. And that would be a tough pill to swallow as well if, if that happens. But Blaney, he's got to get his act together and try to win a race too if he's going to make the playoffs there. But definitely that's crazy stuff right there. But like I said before about Harvick too, like before, like, oh, he, like the playoffs already be out. Well, that, that's like I said, that's not a worry anymore since he was able to win at Michigan and win at Richmond as well. So closer, yeah, he's back. So uh, congratulations to Harvick on like get, getting back to like victory then like and and he ended up now doing it two weeks in a row so that's pretty cool there as well so happy for him as well like I said before and well and well earned definitely anyways hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to leave a like and if you are brand new subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video peace.